able to join. Awesome. Thanks, Laurel. Yeah, welcome everybody. We will record this and uh, Susan, you'll get a copy of that and we'll also post it on our Facebook group um, in case you'd like to see the replay. You know, we started doing these collective chats last year during the pandemic and we decided we needed to still meet virtually even if we couldn't all get together. Um, and so that's what we're doing, these monthly um, first to the Wednesday of the month virtual chats with amazing women kiter speakers to inspire us and to network with each other because we don't always get that opportunity. And if you haven't already, go ahead and go to the participant window. You might have to hit that button that says participants um, on your uh, top or bottom of your screen. If you hover over your name and hit the more button, you'll see there's a place where you can rename yourself with your name and your location. That's just for fun so we can see where everybody's calling in from. So thanks for doing that. So today we are fortunate enough to have our friend and guest speaker, Susan Frieder, who will be talking about freedom, curiosity, and passion, which is what inspires her in her kiting um, journey. You know, she was the Guinness Book of World Records holder recently for the oldest female kite surfer in the world at 78 years young, which I think is pretty amazing. Do you know she kites over 300 days a year in Maui? Wow, I wanna go kite with you, Susan. She's <laughs> also an avid pickleball player. She's very active. She's a world traveler. You'll see in that photo on the left at Machu Picchu, which is on my bucket list. And she's a psychologist, dance therapist, and author. So needless to say, Susan has a really full life. And uh, we're just so happy to get her for an hour here today to be with us. So to kick this off, I'd like to just share with you a short video clip of Susan kite foiling off the coast of Maui. Give me one second. Here we go. Do you see anything, anybody? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't see anything. I'm seeing it. Oh. Now I see. And music. <laughs> it was a very rugged day that day. It doesn't look it, but it was rugged. <laughs> filming oh reinhardt reinhardt <laughs> you did a good job mm -hmm. There's Reinhardt. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Let's give her a oh. round of applause. Some <laughs> awesome kite foiling out on the coast of Maui. Well done, Susan. 
Well Thanks. done, man. You put me to shame. I'm still trying yeah. to learn kite foiling. Oh my goodness. Me too. I call it foiling. 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 <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm going to kick it off and let Susan share with you some things about herself and her kiting journey. So Hi. Susan, take it away. Aloha to everyone. So, so glad you could join and I and have me as, here as your speaker. It's really a pleasure and an honor. <clears throat> I want to mention that was Reinhardt, the Austrian, my Austrian teacher, who was doing the filming, and he was the one that taught all of us older women, actually. And we had to teach him how to teach us because at the beginning he was very critical and would say, you know, if immediately when we came in on the rocks, he would start criticizing us. <laughs> I said, no, Reinhardt, first you have to tell me, wow, you made it back in. Even if you're on the rocks, you're still on land. And uh, then, you can, then you can give me the challenge and the, and the criticism. So we taught him, all of us, about five women, taught him how to teach us in a more, <laughs> yes. And he's become a better teacher and, uh, Wonderful instructor still. The uh, topics we chose, Holly and I, in our little talk before were freedom, curiosity, and passion. I came from a very traditional upbringing. My father was born in Jerusalem. And in, our, in that tradition, women don't, didn't do, well, frivolous things, certainly, and not lift things over your head and not be immodest and so, being a windsurfer first was really a breakthrough. And hi, Jennifer, I see you now. <laughs> so it, just so I understand, am I looking, do I see Jennifer or do I see other people? So you, you can see all of us if you choose the view option, Susan, up on oh. the, probably the top right, you'll see a view option and you can put it on gallery versus speaker. Okay, where do I do that? I see that more. Um, it's a view option. It should say view. Mine's in the upper right hand corner of the no, black screen. I don't, I don't see that. Anybody else have any? I don't see view. I have mute, stop video, share content, participants, and more. Um, try more. Let me try this. Um, sorry about that. That's okay. If you're on your phone, Susan, or your tablet, you may have to change by swiping to one side there's a few yeah different views. that's you're right you're right I did uh, that, that. thank you awesome so anyway um one time I was kite sur windsurfing in uh, Israel at a lot and uh my father was on shore and he's going yeah, I see him on shore beckoning me to come back and he's saying finally came back because it's only seven miles to Jordan and he's saying, why are you the farthest one out there? I said, dad, I'm trying to get up wind. <laughs> so, uh, so there was a little breakthrough with uh, breaking out of a traditional family and uh, learning to be my own person and follow my passion. And one of the aspects we talked about also was this uh, curiosity I have fortunately have a joy of life and a curiosity to learn new things and actually I took my fourth or fifth kite uh, winging lesson uh, in the past week or so now that's a challenge <laughs> I didn't think I could get up from my knees but I'm amazed you know I'm bent half bent over and I'm saying I'm up I'm up okay I'm up I'm up okay <laughs> then I go the rest of the way up so we'll see how that goes Meanwhile, I love kiting. I love uh, the freedom of being out and the sensation of the water and the warmth and the speed and the beauty of being out on the open ocean. And um, that's what I want to start with. If I'm open to any questions or any input. I, oh, the other thing I want to do want to say is that I said those three things, freedom, freedom, curiosity, and passion. But I want to also add balance. 
because I found that it's really important to have balance in your life, to fill up all the tanks in your life, emotional, financial, career, social, relationships, family, and to make sure all the tanks are fill filled. So even though I'm kiting a lot, I balance it with other activities, have a variety of things to keep my body moving in different ways, my mind. I also needed a sitting activity. So I took a bridge about 15 years ago. And maybe by the time I'm 90, I'll know how to play a little better, a, a better game. It's really a wonderful challenge. And uh, so balance all areas of your life and keeping your own equilibrium remembering the positives, everything has benefits and drawbacks and keeping your own equilibrium so that the world doesn't have to bring you back to equilibrium. If you're on a high, somehow the world will tell you, <laughs> or if you're on a low, someone will come in and say, cheer up. So important to ask yourself your own, the own, your own questions to keep yourself in equilibrium. I love that, Susan. And, you know, when we talked about freedom, I, I remember thinking, I'm not sure if I asked you, but being a psychologist for so many years, I think I read over 45 years or something on your on your profile, your LinkedIn, I thought, wow, the freedom you must get just mentally and emotionally from kiting out on the water after working with people in, in such an emotional setting, right? I can, I'm sure it can be an energy vampire. Um, working with other people's problems. So does kiting- Well, actually, I, I find that the, um, I learn so much from people that I've even said to my clients, thank you so much, you've helped me so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you always teach what you have to learn. Right. So for me, it's been about boundaries and self-care and um, self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. So the practice, the practice a uh, private practice of seeing people and talking to people daily keeps me informed and centered mm -hmm. so makes sense and although I am amazing way to do that. Draining. when people are depressed it can be very draining yes well mm -hmm. I know when I'm kiting I can be mindful of, of nothing else it, it gets <laughs> in that mindfulness moment right where we can't think yeah. of anything else and so that's where the freedom for me comes in and I just wondered if that was true for you where you just everything else melts away and that's your time yes it's wonderful feeling of being out there and enjoying that time and refreshing and renewing myself and yeah, we wonder right. people though who don't kite wonder why do we do it every day you did that yesterday right <laughs> and that brings me to 300 days a year of kiting so so what keeps you going and going back so often i mean you're almost kiting every day of the year like do you ever get up some days and just think i don't feel like going no never never is, is that because of your passion for the sport Passion for the sport, my joy of life, the enthusiasm I have for learning new things, and just a general spirit, fortunately, that I was, I came, I was born with. Wow, I love that. I yeah. love that. So tell me about your curiosity. How has that helped you with kiting? I love to learn. I love to learn new things. I'm a, a although I have taught a lot, I've also, I'm a, I love to be a student. And uh, so I'm always virtually traveling. If I'm not physically traveling, I'm watching YouTube videos on anything, including winging and jiving and listening to Jennifer tell me curtsy after you make your turn. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw your beautiful jibe on that video. I was like, oh, look at that. I'm better <laughs> since then. That was about a year and a half ago. I'm better since then. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, but still learning and uh, every day is a new adventure and the conditions are different, the variables are different. So every day is a different day. And uh, that's the other thing I was going to say for people who are new to kiting is I consider it a 12 step program. It's one day at a time and very sequential learning. No, you know, you don't have the mastery of that power, but you one day at a time learn a new step i love that yeah. and and now you're learning winging and well we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. you're ahead of me you're ahead of me i'm really proud we'll that's see awesome. how far i go <laughs> wow that's great yeah.
Um, other thoughts from the audience or discussion points with Susan? This is a very informal talk. So whatever you want to say, feel free. I'm curious. I'm 64 and I twin. Who's that? Wait, who's oh, talking? This is Christine from the Isle of Palms, South Carolina. Hi. 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 I am just amazed at what you're doing. And the thing that really got my in, caught my interest was that you're learning to wing. <laughs> because I had, I mean, I've been twin tipping for about, I think, 18 years. And I enjoy it. And I just get out there and cruise and enjoy it. And my son, who I taught, who quickly just rocketed past me, started foiling. And he's trying to get me to foil because he said, and I'm curious if you agree that as I age, that it's better, on, it'll be better on my body. Yes, it's easier on your body because there's no friction. <laughs> You're right. flying above the water. Now you, that's apart from the falls and the right. dings on your <laughs> Right, right. I'm, but, a little bit of, I'm a bit afraid of that wing. Well, you learn to, you, you learn to remember that the wing is under there and not to kick your feet. Well, mm -hmm. you know, so you learn where it is. It takes a while. And again, it's a 12 step program, one day at a time. Be kind to yourself, take a short time, take as long as you need to learn. And I would definitely try it. I think, do you toe side uh, on your twin tip? Yes, but I okay. haven't, I, I'm wondering if I should try a surfboard first. I've only- Yes, I recommend that very much. And, flat, and then learn, practice. I did that. I went from twin tip to, to surfboard and I still use my surfboard many days. And I learned to change my feet both ways so that I can then transfer that to the foiling skills. Yes, definitely go to a surfboard next. And did you foil behind a boat? First? No, I didn't have that opportunity. Would you recommend that? I think people like that. Yes, yes. I didn't have that opportunity. Yes, I would. Yes, if you can, lovely. And then I don't want to monopolize here, but the next step, my, my son said that he thinks that the winging, the wing, the actual holding the wing he doesn't think that i'll have the strength for that do you find oh, that? oh i don't think it's true it's all everything that i learn about kiting is technical people say now you certainly have to have an, a certain amount of strength and i lift weights and i go to the gym and i stretch and all that yes to you know maneuver and also stay calm in any crisis mm -hmm. you know we call them i call them experiences in any experience <laughs> but no I think it's technical and oh. once you yeah so I I think you could try it all hmm. thank you so you made a good point Susan do you feel like you know working out with weights and stretching is really important for not right. getting injured when you're kind yes yes I, I I do all the variety of as I said I go to the I go to the gym I already went to the gym and played pickleball this morning wow <laughs> And uh, then in the evenings, you know, I'll kite and then I might play golf or I'll play bridge or I'll certainly see clients. And uh, then in the evening, I'll do some stretching again, maybe a little fluid dancing just to keep moving in a variety of ways. I would That's think the dancing helped really helps. I think the, yeah. right, the dance movements of stretching. Yeah. Yes. And, and you then said I, you, you do swing dancing too. What? And you said you did swing dancing swing too. Swing dancing, Argentine tango and ballet. Wow. From, I did once a lecture called From Ballet to Bali to Belly. I do <laughs> to oh, belly. Yeah. Amazing. So, yeah. At my 70th birthday party, I had all the kiters. I had the people from various areas of my life, kiters and uh, bridge players and tennis players and pickleball players. And uh, I did a, I performed a belly dance with the sword on my head. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Fun. I'd love to see the picture. <laughs> okay, I'll send that to you. <laughs> That's awesome. You had some great pictures that I looked through. Um, interesting. So I'm curious, when did you start? Question? Could I ask Was you one? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, just before we get off winging, uh, not winging, but kite wingly, um, you know, being a fellow Maui kiter, and you know, I, I definitely resonate with Christiana thinking about trying foiling. You know, I have gone to uh, getting a surf a kite surfboard. Yes. But I wonder 
Susan, as you know, the conditions in Maui are just really fearsome. I mean, yes, right. 300 days a year, but those 300 days can be like between 13 and 35 miles per hour. Exactly. In one day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so not, and choppy and wavy. Yeah. So yes. not ideal conditions for learning anything new, even freestyle tricks. I just wondered, since there's such a good representation from all over the world, does anyone have a spot that they think is the ideal place to pick up wing, uh, to pick up kite foiling, you know, like that's flat and that has light wind <laughs> <laughs> Before to, to actually get up on a foil when you have two to four foot waves and it's like 30 miles per hour. <laughs> Well, well, South Padre Island, Texas is great for it because we have flat water. Um, you just have to find the deeper water for the foiling. And so we, we have a boat and my husband's foiling. And so he goes out just a little bit on the boat and finds the channel and there's really no waves. So it's pretty easy. And would you say for South Padre Island that you also have what season would be the ideal winds for that? So fall and spring. Oh, so right now, Amy, time to go. Right now. Come on down, Amy. I'll show you the ropes. <laughs> Lovely. Anyone else in terms of um, either? Yeah, you know, I, I can tell from in the Netherlands, uh, kite falling becomes also popular and more, more popular because uh, we don't have so much wind all the time and, and you need less wind to go foiling. But you know what? We don't want to wear a wetsuit. This year it was so hot. I I I, I, I kite surfed in in uh, just bikini and, and uh, oh. wow wow. So and I yeah. I went to Denmark two weeks to uh, uh, White Sands and uh, and um, there was a kite camp there and I did was the cooking crew and I could kite surf in between with the group and then I also kite surfed in uh, in bikini because it was so hot. It was wow. thirty one. Wonderful. Degrees. Wow. But the next day it, I had to wear my wetsuit and it was cold. So it's, it's, it's <laughs> right. Like we yeah, we that's the other thing we love here on Maui is the warmth of yeah. the water. And I the, planned, uh, I, I'm, I'm still working. I'm also a psychologist. I'm, a, I'm working as a child psychologist or a family more. Um, I work with uh, family, family with family. Me mentally um, uh, mild intellectual disorders. OK, so, excellent. So, um, but I'm uh, 58, so I'm next year. I want to take a sabbatical, and then I want to travel a lot and go to all <laughs> kinds of places. And my do my daughter is going to to Portugal to study uh, mar marine biology, Lovely. and so I want to visit her and and go kite surfing there. <laughs> Lovely, so, wonderful. So, yeah. I do it now. Everybody, do it now. Keep yeah. doing everything one day at a time because all of a sudden. Life yeah. starts as a local and ends as an express. And here I am, 78. I, I mean, I'm 19 inside, in case you, yeah, that, you can't tell. <laughs> and I'm, so, I'm, I'm so happy to see, you know, all the women like you. Like, you, know, notice, I, you see a lot of younger women started kite surfing now. And, uh, and, and I get often told by yeah, women of my age, you know, oh, you're so, you're so active. And, and they all think I've got age, uh, ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's just you know I have a lot of energy and I I, I, yeah. I do the kite surfing and it, when there's no wind I go rowing that's also good for your body uh, to to excellent to muscles. excellent yeah yeah lovely yeah Marge go ahead I see your hand up hi everyone hi I'm Marge I'm just put myself on the wrong page. Uh, here we are. Um, thank you very much for your uh, your contribution, Susan. I'm thank 67. You. I'm 67, and um, so I uh, kite surf in Michigan and oh. um, with and in North Carolina, mostly with young men, um, <laughs> and I, it's very. I see a 67 year old woman. So I'm the old bag on the board. And <laughs> so, old lady Susan, they call it. Everybody knows old lady Susan. 
we, we should just rename that hot babe on the board. <laughs> that, that started because I used a cart to carry my uh, things down. One of these cart, you know, to carry the foil and everything down. So one of my friends said, oh, oh, Lady Susan. And it stuck. Aww. They're, they're <laughs> Go jealous. ahead, Marge. Marge. Uh, so, um, and I, for the first time in years, I met a woman in her mid somethings uh, who also snowboards. So I'm looking, always looking for a community of people who, of women or a community of, it may be with older women uh, who like to snowboard. And if there are groups that you know of that like to goof around, I know Kite Sisters is one organization that does, uh, not just for, it's for women, but right. not, you know, I, I don't care what the age group is, but I really like being uh, with people who love to kite surf. And the young men are just a little bit different. The 23 yeah. are, you yeah. know, I love them. They're wonderful. They're fun. Yeah. But yeah. with them would be different. Well, Holly would probably better know the resources as far as the camps or the snowboarding camps <clears throat> groups that would go. I'm not, I'm kind of here. And when I travel, I usually don't kite because I kite so much here. Although I have been to Los Bariles and La Ventana and so forth. Oh yeah. But Holly might have some things you could ask her later, I guess. Yeah, and also Marge, I'm actually just about to publish a list of at least all the kite related camps that are all around the world um, because people have been asking um, for that. And um, I know Lori just mentioned in chat that, that she's had some good experiences with Cincy and Colleen's workshops. Um, and then I know Jen uh, there with the mountains behind her does uh, snow kiting workshops and might know of some snowboarding as well, right? Yes, that'd be great. And when you say snowboarding, Marge, are you talking about with a kite or just snowboarding? Just snowboarding. Just snowboarding. Yeah, yeah. Jen, Jen, do you know any of those? Well, I actually run women's specific snow kiting camps and we have ladies that do it on skis or snowboards. So if you love to kite and you love to snowboard, I'd really recommend you giving it a giving it a try. We run these amazing women's camps. I also have Sensi and Colleen helping me out at a couple of them. And I have these other, you know, females come in and we have such a great time. I run beginners camps for ladies who have never put their two sports together before. And then I also run some more intermediate to advanced camps for, you know, once you're down that 12 step program. I love that. <laughs> so oh my perfect. gosh. That's I've taken a lot of notes, Susan. You're oh, fantastic. Good. Yeah, some great good. stuff. But um, Marge, um, I, I would really recommend giving that a try. Um, but most of us who love to snow kite, we also love to ski and snowboard in resorts. So, um, you know, if there's sometimes if there's days where there's no wind, we all go riding together and, um, and we have a great time. So great. Um, That's I great. hope you'll join me one of these times. Oh, great. Thank now you, we're Jane. Your, your information i will put it in the chat but uh my name is jenny milton but my nickname is adrenogen because i've been into adrenaline sports all my life like susan uh -huh. i started off with windsurfers at uh -huh. a young age and um i'm i'm in my 50s now and uh and i love uh, i love kiting on water on a surfboard on the foil on the mountains um so adrenogen um, is is the name of my business and you'll find me on um, on Instagram, Facebook and also I have a website so Thank Jenny. you Thank you Thanks, Jenny, Jenny. Did, did you just win a, a wetsuit uh, lately on Instagram? Sorry? Did you, did you, did you win a wetsuit with a Yes! I yeah, won a wetsuit! I won oh my god! Oh my gosh! <laughs> you won. On Instagram. Well yeah. done, Jen. Well done. Oh, and I see. Oh, go ahead, Carla. And, and a kite friend of mine won second prize at Bikini, but we didn't accept the prize because the, the shipping cost was uh, too much. It oh. was a prize. Oh, and I see Joyce. Go ahead, Joyce. I know you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I've got a comment and then I've got a question. Um, okay. I'm, I'm Joyce from New Zealand, Aotearoa. Where, where are you in New Zealand? 
Where in New Zealand? Hamilton. Well, actually, at the moment, I'm north of Auckland house sitting, but I live in Hamilton, which is the most inland city in New <laughs> right. Zealand. Okay. Which, which is rather unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, I'm 74, and my partner and I tell everyone, and this is probably a good group because I can see the spread of ages, that uh, the 60s are your golden years. They are absolutely fantastic. So retire as soon as you possibly can. I'm looking at Lori. I'm looking at you. We were academics. Get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and and we say the, six, the 60s are your golden years. You, you have it all. You still have your body. You have your brain. You have your you have your energy you have your dreams everything is still working really well the 70s somebody told us was full of surprises and indeed it is you know and you just don't know what's around the corner so for those of you who are looking forward to more years many more years just keep that in the back of your head 60s are golden golden years so that's the first word of advice and the question I have is have you reflected on the different reactions you have from different age groups, like the 30 year old women, the 50 year old women, the women your own age? And uh, what what do you what do you see as those responses to you? That's, those are good questions. First, I want to say, fortunately, the 70s for me are also golden years. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, thank goodness. And uh, so I but I'm, but I'm, I've still got I've still got some years to go. <laughs> That's right. And I sure. appreciate every moment and I'm grateful for every moment. Uh, as far as reflecting on different reactions, I don't know. I don't really think about that too much. I just enjoy. Oops. What happened there? We still see you and hear you. OK, okay. mine changed. OK. Um, different reactions. Uh, maybe the younger women. Do any of the younger women have a surprising reaction to you being out there kiting well, just, so uh, often and so well? Are always, they say I'm an inspiration. I appreciate that. I'm just doing what I love. I'm not doing that for any purpose. Um, by the way, I want to say that windsurfing was the first time I called myself anything. Like I am a... I didn't say dancer, a psychologist. I am a windsurfer. And it was an identity that really was a transformational time. Mm. So uh, it, it's continued also. Um, I just appreciate the input usually of people, you know, uh, marveling that somebody can. What, what's amazing to me also is that when I'm down at the beach and I'm coming in, and these young men, strong, buff young men are standing there and I'm carrying my foil up the, and we have a little, I mean, it's a, a cliff about two feet. It's not even a cliff. It's a little tiny hill. It's hard for me to get up and nobody ever offers to help. Really? <laughs> Amy's husband, I have to say thank you to Michael, but I'm amazed that people don't, I ask people to help, but they don't. Uh, so, you know, people don't view you as you're, you're out there, you're capable. Well, they obviously know you're capable and it shows in your <laughs> video because I watched the video from beginning to end, which our group didn't see all of it, but I saw you carrying all that equipment out yourself and I saw you bringing it back in and you were very <laughs> capable. And by the way, you have great legs. I'm sure the dancing and kiting helps that, right? <laughs> so you're in really great shape. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't know if that answers the question on the reactions. I, I just take it in and appreciate everybody's input, everybody comes with their own perspective. And well, another thing I've learned in my, uh, from my seeing in my private practice is that all you have control over is your own perspective and therefore your then your attitude. You don't have control over almost everything else. So keeping your perspective, seeing things in, in a way Right. Rather than, oh, he's so rude or she's so rude. Oh, maybe they've had something going on so I can have a different perspective on something. And then therefore I have a different attitude and it releases me. That's the whole purpose. That's where the freedom comes is the release that I have from not judging or comparing. Of course, I do all those things, but I'm always working on being mindful of uh, 
releasing myself from any uh, restrictions that bind me. I love that. It's really good advice. I have something. Jennifer, go ahead. Okay. So when Susan learned to foil, the foils were really big and heavy, <laughs> really heavy. Okay. And with a long mast. So I would say now get a very light setup with a short mast to start and yes. make sure it's all carbon, no aluminum, because yeah. uh, I tell the, all the guys in Dallas that were like, oh, I don't know if my wife wants me to buy new stuff. And I said, well, just tell her when that aluminum goes up and comes crashing down on your head, you know, <laughs> it's, it's more of an impact and it could break your helmet. So that's, um, but that's one of the things I would say is get a, an all carbon, don't buy the right. aluminum. Um, but when Susan started, she was on a liquid force fish and I had that set up for one session and I couldn't pick it up. And the guys in Dallas carried it over to the water for me because I couldn't pick it up. It was so heavy and the kite. So I remember Susan had mastered having the guys get that thing out of her car and take it down to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> because it was so heavy and one time she asked me can you get this out of my car and I cannot lean bend in this and I said no Charles I need you to Charles. Get this car because <laughs> that was his job the foils were very big and heavy right. and back then the guys helped you with them because right they were <laughs> they were so heavy so um short mast and aluminum and Amy, I have a beginner setup that I will give you when I get back oh, in a week and a half. Wonderful, and, wonderful. Yeah. That's, so it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a called a graduated system, 15 yeah, inch, yeah. 24, yeah. and then on to the 36 inch mm -hmm. mat. Yeah, but, but, but one of the Jennifer. things... I yeah, that's me. So, but one of the things we have now is we have short masts for the wing. So I didn't realize this the other day. I was like, wait, I'm four bolts and one board leash away from having a second setup. So... Right. I went and got the nut so I can give you like my old uh like Wonderful. reef already hit the reef a million times foil and then my winging mask which is short and that's your beginner setup for the first in so many times I and then you buy that, yeah no I and then just you want buy to your say that Jennifer is uh, an outstanding kind of oh foiler <laughs> outstanding <laughs> because i've been doing it so long but but yeah so that that's the thing now remind people oh if you have a short wing mast that's a great beginner mast Good. for foiling yes so the, whoever was asking i forgot the name of the person asking to learn about learning at this age yes <clears throat> start with the graduated system <coughs> good me. advice yeah good advice but susan susan didn't because they didn't have it <laughs> <laughs> persistence i haven't mentioned persistence <laughs> yeah. you did it the hard way <laughs> yes that's important persistence so even if you get frustrated and you still want to do this whatever it is continue and you know professional lessons i always tell professional lessons yes for sure other thoughts or questions for Susan? <clears throat> I just keep thinking, Susan, like, well, first of all, when did you start kiting? When did you transition from windsurfing? Oh, so I was windsurfing for 30 years. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and then my father, my my, my mother died, my sister died, I got divorced. My father had quadruple bypass surgery at ADH. Mm. So for eight years, we traveled around the world together, he and I. We went back to Israel where he was born because my grandmother and great grandmother are buried on the Mount of Olives. Wow. We went on cruises, we traveled everywhere. And then my friend Ed at the beach, was I was still on the windsurfer and he, he sees me slogging out there while he's whizzing by on his kite. And he said, and then after my father died, he said, you, Susan, you need a new project. And it had become safer to learn. And so I just started taking up kite surfing and that was probably 10, 15 years ago. So in your sixties. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because I know I learned when I was in my early 50s. And at the time, I remember a guy on the beach here in South Padre marveling that me, this old lady, was kiting. And he made (laughs) some comment about it. And it made me really upset. But to your point about managing your own self and not worrying about others, I just went out on the water and showed him up. And felt pretty good about it. <laughs> That's how I handled that reaction. But I remember thinking, you know, I'm, I'm really learning this as, as an older woman. I remember thinking, you know, I wonder if there's people in my age group and older. And I was so inspired to find that there was not only people in my age group and older, but women. And so it's so wonderful to see you and everyone here that, you know, we just embrace this sport no matter what age we are, no matter what our abilities are. Um, and that, like you said, just persistence and take it one step at a time, 12 steps, um, and keep the curiosity to keep learning new things. I think that's so important, not rest on our laurels. Once we get something and we're really good, take it to the next step. Um, I love that advice. I'm, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to learn winging. <laughs> I, I, I'm a bit inspired by you to do so. Um, so I, I just so appreciate what you're doing and sharing some of yourself with us. Um, and Thank so bef- b- before we wrap up, I just want to open it up. Are there any more <laughs> questions? Yeah, Laurel. Go oh, ahead. thank you, Susan. This is um, so enjoyable. I have a question about what it's like to learn wing foiling. Um, I learned this <laughs> summer, I'm 45. Great. Um, so I just would love to hear what, <laughs> how, how it was for you um, and your learning right now. What's it oh, like to I'm learn? only at the very beginning. I'm just pleased that I can get up from my knees <clears throat> excuse me I'm pleased I can get up from my knees and stand up slowly and and sail out a little bit and uh, turn around sometimes so it's just all very new and very challenging right now <laughs> but I'm taking professional lessons again even though I don't think it's as necessary as it is in kiting but it's still um, Oh, who said, if I can do it, you can. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was responding to Taryn, who said she okay. was new at kiting, and she's so inspired. Oh, great. Yes. What, oh, Cabaretti is a good place to learn, somebody saying? Uh, Laurel is in Cabaretti. Oh, yeah, and I also place. mentioned um, Amy, Oahu is a great place for kite foiling. It's nearby to Maui. It's lighter winds. I bet okay. it would be, you know, good to go over there too. Great. But that's, you live that's in, neat. Yeah, you I live, live in Cabarete? I do. I, I live in Cabarete. So Lovely. everybody's welcome to come visit. Thank you. What's the best season for that for you? You know, for- I like summer. Summer really for me is the best season. Very beautiful. Winter is also good. So it's really summer and winter are two windy seasons. Summer and winter, which is opposite of South Padre. So I really should come visit you. And that's by the right. way, if, in case you don't know, Laurel has a kite school there in Cabarete, <gasps> Dominican. Wonderful. So she has a whole school. It's under her Wonderful. name. She's easy to find. So and it, it's and it's now a wing foil school also. So. Nice. Yes, that's wonderful. We're okay. We're on to the next uh, activity and the next pursuit and we continue <laughs> learning, being curious, having the freedom, fortunately, to be able to do that and the feeling and the passion to pursue our dreams. Agreed. Really. Agreed. And balance. And keeping balance, so I don't get so high. So then I have to somebody just, brings me down, I, but keeping myself mention, down. I just wanted to mention to Taryn, who meant, who said that um, she was new to kiting in general, and I can just point out, you know, when people were mentioning about how different people moved from windsurfing to kiteboarding and taking up kiteboarding later in life, that um, two experiences I think are helpful. One, a number of us, I mean, I was a kite, I was a windsurfer, but it was my daughter who at like 14 or 15 said, I don't want to do windsurfing, that's so old school. (laughs) (laughs) I want a kiteboard. And when she was able to sort of get up and ride like the first half hour of lesson, (laughs) I was like, oh man, I can do that. (laughs) Do it like in one lesson, what I spent like, you know, ages to do on a windsurfer. Same. I didn't try oh. that. And then it was so much 
uh, less equipment to bring around. I mean, you know, I had all those, all those sales, those booms, those, you know, all of that stuff. And so she actually got our entire family sort of switched to from mm -hmm. windsurfing to kiteboarding because she said, you know, I, I want to do this new thing, not the stuff you're doing. And so yeah. that can happen as well. And the same thing for a wing foiling. Um, I'm not, I'm not interested because there's enough wind in Maui, but my son is um, now a doctor in Chicago and they don't have enough wind there. So when he comes to, to Maui, he can kite, but when he's back home, he can't. So he started wing foiling to try and figure out if there was something he could do on a lake in an interior area that didn't have as much wind. So I think that a lot of those things are easier to learn than some of the stuff that we started with, you know, back when we were younger. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I think, you know, with good lessons and, um, you know, and if you're pretty, pretty uh, athletic, that you can kind of get going and like for kiteboarding in three or four lessons, you know, you can really get to a point where you're having a lot of fun and whizzing back and forth. So sure. I think the equipment's easier. I think the teaching is, you know, they've kind of fine tuned. And then there are all these new sports that are actually in some ways easier to get going on in light winds than, right. um, than kiting. And the winging gives you so much more flexibility, right? For light wind, for lakes, mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. you know, if you right. really want to be outside on the water, it gives you that flexibility, which I think is amazing. Right. Can I just go ahead, Joyce? I, I know you're about to close, but um, I've really struggled with people calling me inspirational, and I can hear other people <laughs> say that, they, that they've been called that too. And it doesn't take much to be inspirational, it seems, because people, you know, are amazed that somebody in their 50s is doing it. And right. for most of us, I think we're just doing something that we really are enjoying. And I've struggled with how to respond to that. And, and I think you should never lose an opportunity to kind of um, push the agenda of, of, of women. And so what I'm now practicing as a new response is, thanks very much. Okay, thanks very much for that. But I need to, I think you need to raise your bar. And whether it's Mother Teresa or whether it's uh, Hillary Clinton or Jacinda Dern, you know, there are women who are doing really significant things. And so I'm trying to put in my back pocket, you know, the women who have won two, the only people who have ever won uh, two Nobel prizes, for example, is a woman. And, and mm -hmm. those sorts of amazing things, mm -hmm. the women that were behind Da Vinci and all that kind of stuff so that, I use it as an opportunity to say, actually, you don't know about how amazing women are. And I just have something that I enjoy. So mm -hmm. that's been my response because I've really struggled with that. Your inspirational thing. And I'm going like, oh, man, I, you know, I'm just doing what I enjoy. So I I'm just want to add that um, uh, old, old age is always 15 years older than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the, that's how they keep raising the bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a great thought, Joyce, is just to remind, especially remind younger women that there's a lot of inspirational women out in the world that we need to look to, right, and research. And, you know, and I think also a great response. I mean, I've been called inspirational before by younger women that I'm helping or coaching or mentoring. And my response to them is you're inspirational, too. Mm -hmm. I try that one too. And I just stop and mm -hmm. they just smile like, okay, like, okay, I get it. Yes. Because you know? everybody is inspirational, views. right? right. And everybody's inspirational is somebody. Um, so I guess in life, you know, we should all want to be inspirational to someone, um, right? Everybody has attributes, you know? So appreciating the pot. Again, I, I always try to balance the benefits and the drawbacks. Yeah. and see, see the balance and uh, be grateful for what we do have. Exactly. Go ahead, Marge. Are you looking at the clock? No, I'm looking at Marge. Go ahead, Marge. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're on mute. 
Thanks. Uh, when people call me inspirational, I find that um, they're saying it out of a lack of confidence that um, there's no sense, not, not everyone, obviously, but the women who say that to me start out by thinking I could never do that. And, um, and my response is, oh, yes, you can. Um, mm -hmm. I'm seven or, you know, if they're younger than sort of a brag on 67, it's the only time I ever can brag about anything I know. <laughs> related to age. So uh, anyway, um, I find that want encouraging people to get into the sport, especially older women who think they can't do it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Thing that yeah. is, Agreed. And plus, I want more older women in the sport. So. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Go ahead, Amy. I was just uh, noting, I heard in the conversation that Joyce and um, uh, Lori were academics, um, and um, so I am as well. Um, two, two things that were interesting about that in response to the inspiration. I mean, we have a lot of teachers here in terms of, you know, having kiteboarding schools and whatnot. And I just am always happy when someone says that I'm an inspiration because I mean, you've, if you're our age, you've lived your life as a role model. I mean, if you've worked or if you've achieved something unusual in whatever field, it's because you had the energy, the enthusiasm and the vision to do that, you know? And that's an inspiration to other women who have felt challenged or who have been put down or have, you know, not had those opportunities. So I kind of, you'll always really, you know, wonderful when someone says, oh, you're an inspiration or you're a role model, because in some ways I, I feel like, you know, we've achieved our goal as, you know, in just being ourselves, we mm -hmm. have inspired someone else to do more, to try more, to do something else that they otherwise would not have. And that can go everywhere from, you know, just uh, recently we had a family member visit and, you know, they watched us kiteboard and um, they're our age, but their, their, um, their spouse was, was much older and had never taken swimming. He had grown up in the, in the, um, in the, in the depression ages and, you know, far inland and never had gone swimming. And that really was hard for his wife because his wife never got to go to the beach, never got to go to swimming because, you know, her husband was afraid of water. And so in Maui, he decided to take swimming lessons. Right. He loved it. And now mm -hmm. they're gonna join, join a club. They're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to swim every day and their health is gonna be much better as a result of somehow seeing me do something they don't wanna do but realizing to be able to do that, they'd have to be able to get into the water. <laughs> you know, so right. that's kind of inspiration. You sort of think, oh, wow, you know, if you can inspire older people, younger people, you know, students, mm -hmm. anyone uh, to do something that they might not have wanted to do before or try, I think that's pretty wonderful. And so I, I want to thank all these other instructors and folks that, yeah. you know, you have made your profession and your passion into a humanitarian sort of effort. You know, just by being an inspiration and a role model, mm -hmm. you've actually sort of changed other people's lives and helped them achieve their dreams as well. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's exciting. That makes me feel like, part of your balance, Susan, you know, is this idea that everyone should be doing not only things for themselves, their family, you know, their profession, but something to help make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And if you can do good. that part of what you're doing for fun, wow. Well, that's good. What you, Amy, what you said was so important, the being true to yourself, doing what we love. And then as it turns out, it might be because, you know, giving and receiving are the same. So it might be helpful to somebody else, but we're doing it because we love whatever it is we're doing. And then we're giving in, in some way. I mean, that's the perfect solution with, that you don't have this separation between, you know, you know, when I think back of legacy, as many of us do when they reach our age, 
I guess I'm a lot older than I look. <laughs> so that, you know, after deciding that, you know, you, your, your career or your profession actually served so many people as an academic, um, you know, that's a wonderful thought that you achieved a humanitarian sort of goal at the same time you were doing a profession mm. and a career and something that you loved. That's pretty mm -hmm. fun. I love that, Amy. Thank you for those inspirational words, Amy. That was really well said. Um, let's give her applause <laughs> for reminding us all, reminding us all that we are an inspiration to one another and to people out in the world. And that is a beautiful thing. And it's a legacy we leave. And I know Susan today has given us an inspirational message about kiting and her journey and the freedom that she gets because of her curiosity and her passion to keep going in this sport and be the best she can be and giving us tips about life as well. Thank you, Susan, for joining us. You were just a pleasure to listen to. Let's give her applause. Thank a round you of so applause. Much. You were Thank just you. a joy. Thank you. And I love meeting all of you. I look forward to hopefully connecting with you at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We look forward to that. And just so you know, for the group before you um, leave us today, next month, October 5th, we have the Kite Surfing World Champion, Perry Roberts, who was scheduled for July and rescheduled. So she'll be back in October. And we're still looking for speakers for the last two months of our year. If you'd like to nominate another inspirational woman, feel free to send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. And just a reminder that Francis on our board does Workday Wednesdays every Wednesday, so today is that day, where on our Facebook group, you can comment on her post to promote your brand, links, blogs, videos, whatever it is that you'd like to get out to our audience of women kiters. Um, this is us, our board. Um, we're here to serve you, to inspire and educate and support you and your kiting around the world. Um, please do consider volunteering your time to help our mission in supporting each other. It's only four hours a month. If you're interested, please let us know pretty easy work and it's a lot of fun and with that I want to say as a reminder to please encourage support and celebrate one another through kiteboarding and with that I want to wish you an amazing day thanks ladies for being here aloha to everyone you, Susan. aloha aloha bye everyone bye everyone